One of the best examples of China's commitment to regional integration is the Asia Infrastructure Investment Bank. China has been contributing to that bank. I speak with Jin Li Chuan, the president of AIIB, to talk about the future of AIIB and how it, it can contribute to the economy of the Asia Pacific region. We'll be back after this. You're still watching World Inside with me, Tian Wei, coming to you from Vietnam on the site of the APEC Economic Leaders Meeting. Leaders of 21 Pacific Rim economies are set to renew their endeavors to advance regional integration and forge stronger partnerships at the upcoming APEC Economic Leaders Meeting in Da Nang. China has played a positive role in creating shared interests for regional economies, exemplified through proposals like the Asia Infrastructure Investment Bank. Of course, AIIB now has been attracting members from all over the world. AIIB began operation in the year 2015 with the goal of fulfilling infrastructure gaps in the Asia Pacific region, and it has progressed in leaps and bounds in funding infrastructure needs in the region and certainly beyond. And here in Da Nang earlier, I sat down with Jin Li Chun, president of AIIB, who shared his thoughts on the economy in the Asia Pacific region and the ultimate goal of AIIB. President Jin, welcome to CGTN. Thank you very much. Pleasure. It's a great pleasure to have you. What does Asia Pacific region mean for AIIB? It means a lot. You see, the Asian countries are the first to join um, with China to build up this bank. And uh, this, as you know by its title, is Asian uh, Infrastructure Investment Bank. So we focus on the Asian sustainable development, and we would like to promote the broad-based economic social development in this region through investment in infrastructure and other productive sectors. President Jin, I understand that in this new era, the Asia Infrastructure Investment Bank has a lot of new plans, for example, for next year. You're thinking about expansion of membership. You're thinking about issuing new bonds. You're also thinking about contributing more to the green development. So, but it seems like greatly forward. You have to do all of these things at the same time. Can it be done? Of course. Of course we can do it. The whole idea of setting up a new multilateral development bank is to have a new institution which would be catering to the need of Asian countries. If it were not new, I don't think there's any sense for us to have another institution just because it's new, with new features, particularly the bank with the 21st century governance, with special attention to the uh, broad-based economic uh, benefits of the people to deal with climate change, right. to protect the environment, to bring benefit to each and every one in this region. And that's our mission. The nature of AIIB evolve. People are comparing ever more your role with that of the World Bank, the Asia Development Bank as well. People are saying, really? Is AIB, as you've been saying, not taking the place of their job? You see, uh, I am certainly ambitious, but f in the first instance, I would say the Asian countries and all of the 57 founding members, and including the new members, are ambitious. Um, you see, we have very good relationship with the other MDBs, multilateral development banks, in this big family and we are the youngest and we've been taken care of by our elder brothers and sisters we are very much grateful to the world bank adb ebrd and other institutions you call them elder brothers and sisters of course <laughs> in all my sincerity <laughs> uh, but as you know some people did have skepticism about the uh, intention of china to lead the efforts to setting up such, such a bank some people questioned the 
uh, idea whether this bank, once set up, was supposed to cut the ground from under the feet of the World Bank or ADB, etc., which turned out to be false assumption. As you see, China continued to support World Bank, ADB, particularly in terms of the concession of funding. China has actually increased its contribution to World Bank's IDA, to ADB's ADF. So, you see, it's very clear. But do you feel, as a result, President Jin, the competition from the others? No, no, no. You, you see, because the demand for investment in it is a huge. Uh, according to the estimation made by some of these institutions, in this region, every year there is a need for infrastructure investment to the order of one trillion U.S. dollars. Mm -hmm. Nobody can meet such a kind of need, even with the combined efforts of all the institutions which are active in this region. It's still not possible. AIIB is working ever closely with China, for example, on some of the Belt and Road Initiative projects. Does that mean that you are getting this nature about China's contribution ever clearer than all the other natures that the AIIB is supposed to catch shoulder? Uh, you know, uh, talking about uh, Belt and Road Initiative, I think it's interesting for me to share with you some of our perspectives on this issue. Some people uh, confused Belt Road Initiative with AIIB. And I've tried my very best to clarify. And this will be a good occasion <laughs> to do that. <laughs> but you see, some people asked uh, the question, why uh, did uh, the World Bank, ADB, EBRD, and the New Development Bank which, was head, which is headquartered in Shanghai, That's right, and with the uh, AWIB uh, entered into agreement with the Chinese Ministry of Finance about supporting the Belt and Road Initiative. And I thought my answer is, first of all, don't look at the initiator. Look at the initiative itself. If this is a good one, if it's good, we should all support it. this kind of very, very good initiative. As you see, World Bank and uh, other institutions have always responded to the um, initiatives of the uh, major shareholders, G20, APAC, it's all right. On the other hand, infrastructure investment could be very long term. Mm -hmm. How to see the benefits of it, it's very hard to tell at the very beginning. This is exactly why we have to start now. Why now is the time? Because Asian countries did invest in infrastructure. With the fast economic development in this region, with so many people lifted out of poverty over the last two or three decades, particularly in China, you can reasonably expect the huge demand for infrastructure. And if we don't do it now, the bottlenecks will come one after the other compromising sustained development in the years to come. But the urgency should never take the precedence of the necessity or to assess and to think and articulate very well about the potential of investment. The urgency would drive us to do act now rather than to wait. And to go a step further, just because infrastructure investment would take years to complete, to generate revenues, and you are locked in in certain infrastructure projects. How do you see the relationship among many of the contributors of AIIB? For example, China is a main, one of the major contributors. Uh, there are other developed economies. There are different ideas flying around. It's how do you, as president of AIIB, be able to balance among all these? Uh, when all of these countries come together, to, setting up, to set up this bank. There must be the shared vision. Okay. They agree on the, sh on the mandate of this institution. In spite of the differences in many other dimensions among all of these shareholders, but the one defining factor is they're all committed, focused on economic development through infrastructure investment. So that is why we can have the shared benefit we could have a shared mandate because, you know, as President Xi said uh, when he referred to the Belt Road Initiative, broad consultation, 
joint construction shared benefit. That speaks a lot. Give me an example of how one of those projects is underway and how partners, member countries of AIB are in consultation about what to do, how to do it. You see, we uh, work closely with the board and we deliver our strategy uh, to the board about uh, supporting the infrastructure investment in this region and beyond. As you see, we have non-Asian uh, members. Uh, we will eventually invest in these non-regional members for the whole purpose of uh, promote, promoting global economic benefit. So when we discuss all these issues with the board, we understand what are the concerns, what are the requests, what are the demands of the people represented by the board. For instance, uh, we are now working with the board about the balanced approach to development in Asia and outside Asia. We all understand it's not possible for any region to develop on its own uh, without cooperation with the non-regional members, mm -hmm. without supporting of other regions. Now, if you look at the relationship between Asia and Africa, if you look at the relation between Asia and South America, to say nothing of the very close relationship with the European countries, we all are in the same continent. Okay. So how do we balance? That is the very important uh, topic. We agree with the board how to sequence our investment in, for instance, in, in ASEAN countries, in South Asian countries, Central Asia, and all the way to East and Central uh, Europe. And then, as you see, we have already uh, invested in a renewable project in Egypt, which is not an Asian member. So we are working very closely with the board. The board give us guidance, and we share uh, our perspectives with the board from our experience of working in the, in the front. Just follow up on that. When you have projects everywhere, wouldn't you spread thin? because AIIB is still only starting. That's right. That is why uh, we need to work very closely with other countries. For instance, you know, we have not yet started to work in Africa, except in, except in Egypt, right? We have not worked in South America. But you see, we have uh, already uh, uh, have an understanding and a very, very good uh, relationship with other MDBs. If we in the future work in Africa, we have African Development Bank as our partner. And we have very good uh, support from EBRD, you know, and also uh, Inter-American Development Bank, world comes as to work in South America. And so this co-financing, this kind of, you know, close relationship helps a lot because it reduces the cost of both institutions when we work together. And we can depend on the knowledge, networking, of those regional development banks. I can see the excitement in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> we are talking about all these possibilities. But, you know, many of the things that AIB is doing actually is unprecedented, particularly when it's mainly focusing on infrastructure with all these member countries. Um, so, in a way, you have to explain to a lot of people about the things you just explained to me so many times. You know, we try our very best to reach out to media, to the, uh, all the stakeholders, shareholders, and the, uh, the general public. You know, it's an ongoing process. There are lots of questions about what we are going to do now or, or in the immediate future. Talking about the questions, I still have one big one to ask you. Yeah. 19th Party Congress of the Chinese Communist Party, after that, the world is wondering whether China is getting more ambitious. And what would that mean for the rest of the world? How do you understand the so-called ambition of China? You see, uh, the uh, presidency's statement in the uh, Party's Congress, 19 Party's Congress, is very clear. So I would uh, like those people who have questions to read from the first word until the last word. Three and a half hours. Read from A to Z, okay, <laughs> of, this, uh, of this statement. And all of the questions which could be on their mind could be resolved. Uh, 
my view is a strong leader is good for China. And a strong Chinese economy is good for Asia and for the rest of the world. China is our biggest shareholder. Uh, sustained, fast growth of China means a lot for this bank. The Asian region is the focus of our efforts to invest in an infrastructure. And uh, everybody uh, would like to see Asia would continue to grow and the expectation is very high. So this would also mean the expectation on China is very high. So after the meeting's successful conclusion, I follow the international media, I always say mostly it's positive. There are debates about models, development models. For AIB, of course, there's also one related to that. What is going to be the models for AIB? We uh, work with uh, all of the member countries. And a fundamental principle for this bank is to listen to the uh, people, listen to the uh, government and, uh, and all those stakeholders. Because I do not believe any development model could be imposed from outside on any country. Uh, economic, political situations vary from country to country. You can always learn from them, but you can never copy the development experience. I think the success of China's uh, development uh, tells us China, you know, had tried its very best to learn from the other countries' experience. Asian countries, developer countries, and try to creatively and innovatively apply all those development experience in this China's development. So our idea is to help the member countries, particularly low-income countries, to learn from the development of some emerging market economies and apply the experience creatively and innovatively. And this is what we do actually. Okay. We will continue to support them, but I don't think there is uh, one size fits all solution for development. President Jin, you yourself, professionally developed, also with the path of China's opening up and reform, and also goes with China's own search for its own models. How do you individually feel about that, and what would that mean for your job as the president of AIIB? We set up this bank with the 21st century governance, and we operate this bank by a new model of branding. And I would say lots of features of this bank is new. So my uh, basic principle is we need to move out of the intellectual ghetto to avoid institutional obesity. I love that. That's Thank a you. great quote. <laughs> <laughs> President Jin, before we go, I do want to ask you, since we're here for the APEC Economic Leaders Week, debates about what kind of trade mechanism, RCEP, you know, TPP, debates about what this region should be like, debates about geopolitics, which country will do or which countries will have a leading role, all are extremely important here. What do you make personally as an intellect and also as president of AIB of this debate? Uh, I would follow very much uh, closely the uh, interesting discussions among the leaders. Okay. And these leaders of, of so many countries uh, would share their own perspectives on the broad issue. How can we develop harmoniously, collectively, and bring benefit to the people. I think that's the central uh, idea. So I, I follow the debate, I follow the discussions. Um, my duty is humbly, we try to do very best to respond to the requests of all our member countries and to respond to the needs of the people. And we will try to do our best to help them. And that is Jin Li Chun, president of Asia Infrastructure Investment Bank, talking to me earlier on the site of the APEC Economic Leaders Meeting. And that is all the time we have here from Da Nang for you. If you'd like to see more, try to find us, World Inside CGTN, into your search engine or check out our YouTube channel. You can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook, 
and thirdly on Sina Weibo. From me, Tian Wei, and everyone here in the Nambian Land and back in Beijing, thanks for watching and tune in again next time for insights across China, across the region, and certainly from all over the world.